Welcome, and thanks for stopping by to check out what's new in FarmBright this month. Our changes this month are focused on efficiency, communication, and customization. First, you can now enable push notifications for task assignments on the FarmBright mobile app. This helps you make sure that no work is overlooked. Next, you can now integrate a Bluetooth electronic ID scanner to more easily find and work with your animals, plants, equipment, inventory, and products in the software. You'll also see new enhancements to the crop plan to generate it across a longer date range and reorder the way your crops are shown on the report. There are also more improvements to notes and tasks and streamlined data between your market orders and accounting income transactions. All right, let's take a look. The first new feature that we'll take a look at is your ability to set up push notifications from the FarmBright mobile app. To do that, let's switch to the app view. Whether you're using the FarmBright mobile app that you downloaded from the App Store on Apple or Android, or simply using your mobile device's browser to access app.farmbright.com, you can enable these notifications by navigating to your profile. You'll see a button to allow push notifications to this device. Click that, and you'll see a message that your notification permissions were updated. If you get any additional message from the device asking if you want to enable notifications, be sure to say yes and approve any confirmation from the device at this point. Then save your FarmBright profile. Now that the notifications are configured and allowed on your device, you'll get notifications like this whenever a new task is assigned to you. When you tap the task from the notification bar, you'll be brought to FarmBright to start working and the notification will be cleared. Be aware that you enable these notifications per device. If you use FarmBright on a phone, laptop, and tablet, and want to get notifications on all three, you'll perform that process on each device. Okay, so now that you've seen how to enable those mobile notifications to be alerted when you have work assigned to you, let's take a look at a new efficient process for completing that work out in the field. You can now use a Bluetooth-enabled scanner to scan RFID tags or barcodes and bring up the record associated with them directly in FarmBright. You'll be able to add electronic IDs and scan the following record types. Livestock, plantings, grow locations, equipment, inventory items, products, and climate gauges. That means that you can use this process and integration to easily scan any of those record types to bring up a specific existing record in FarmBright or add a new one. Think of it as a shortcut to start working with the record. Maybe you scan one of your inventory items and reduce the quantity you have on hand in FarmBright. Maybe you scan a planting and create a treatment for an application of herbicide. Or scan an animal, take a measurement, and record a treatment. To get started with this, you'll first need an RFID scanner and RFID tags, or a barcode scanner and barcodes. You might pick these up at a local supply store, an online farm and ranch site, or even on Amazon. While this step is outside of FarmBright, we can tell you that we do not require any specific reader or tags. You can use any scanner that meets industry standards ISO 11784 or 11785 regulations. You don't need an expensive one built specifically for livestock to integrate with a scale head. We found that inexpensive ones made for scanning pet microchips work just as well for this purpose. As long as the reader can connect to your device through Bluetooth, it should work with FarmBright. You might buy the reader and tags together in a bundle, which generally would help you ensure the reader and the tags are compatible with each other. We advise that you follow the manufacturer's instructions to affix the tags and connect the scanner to your mobile device and test it. Once you have the reader connected and the items around your farm tagged, you can then input the electronic ID information into your records. You could add these individually or maybe upload a spreadsheet to add them all at once. If you choose to add these electronic IDs individually, just navigate to the record, edit its details, and supply the ID number in the electronic ID field. Then be sure to save after that. Once you have the electronic IDs associated with the records, you can start scanning those tags and barcodes to find the records in the software. While you could do this from a laptop, we think you'll probably use the FarmBright mobile app for this, so let's switch to the mobile view. When you're ready to start scanning, 
Click the menu and choose Start Scanning Session. This tells Farmbright to look for inputs from the reader via Bluetooth. You can scan the tag from any page in Farmbright. You don't need to be on this scanning session page when actually scanning the tag. And once you scan the tag, you'll see the record brought up on your device. You can then access any of its history and use the menu to perform new actions. We might record treatments or feedings, use something from our inventory as an input, take a measurement, or easily record a yield. You'll have full access to the record to add what you need. Now, if the tag you scan is not found in FarmBright, you'll also have the opportunity to add a new record at this point. You can supply basic information about it. Notice that the electronic ID was pre-populated into the field in this livestock example. This could be very helpful if you're scanning recently purchased animals if they're delivered onto your farm with existing electronic ID tags. Or maybe you're scanning new seedlings you recently purchased or inventory that was just delivered from the supply company. You can create the record and then work with it from here. Now let's move on and check out some of the enhancements to the crop plan. If you've never seen this before, the crop plan helps you plan for the future to see what you're planting and where it's located. We've made some improvements to this based on user requests for additional functionality. You can now generate the crop plan for a custom date range instead of selecting a calendar year. This allows you to span calendar years and seasons to get a broader view of your crop operations. Let's set this for the past few years and see that all the years and months within our date range are now displayed. We've also docked the left-hand column for crop type, meaning that if you're searching over a larger date range, the left-hand column now stays in place so that you can scroll horizontally on the grid and still easily see what plant you're working with. Perennial plantings are also improved to show you repeated harvests throughout the years. And finally, you can sort the crop plan by any of the columns. Perhaps you want your crops ordered alphabetically, or by location, or even by the dates. Now let's move on to the inventory section, where you'll see that you now have the ability to write notes on inventory items. This is the same familiar feature that you're used to from other FarmBright records like equipment, livestock, and plantings, but expanded to provide a way to jot down quick information about your inventory items. Now let's move on to livestock and select one of our animals to see a new option for you to delete incomplete tasks when changing the status of an animal to something like butchered, culled, deceased, or sold. If we're selling this animal, we can then choose to delete incomplete tasks and events for them. So future tasks like cleaning out their stall, feeding them, or giving them routine vaccines will no longer show on your task list. Also, be aware that if you delete an animal, that will automatically happen as the animal record no longer exists. That's also true for deleting crops, equipment, and grow location records as well. And the last new feature to quickly take a look at, let's go to the market section and take a look at an order. Let's take a look at one of our orders that still has a payment due. When you supply a PO number and mark the payment status as paid, this PO number will now be recorded on the income transaction in FarmBright's accounting section. We'll navigate there and see that that PO number is automatically appended to the transaction description. All right, that's going to take us through all of the new features for June 2024. Reach out to us if you have any questions as you start using them in your FarmBright account. Thanks for watching.